Hey there YouTube, I just wanted to do a really super fast video here. Uh, Jonathan Clack just came out with another video and he's just totally perverting the Word of God once again. So we're going to go through it really, really quick. He's using his brainwashing, twisting scripture methods. Um, if you haven't seen this video, I strongly suggest that you take a look at it. It's called uh, Jonathan Clack is brainwashing God's children. Beware of cults led by fallen angels. I'm just uh, play just a quick snippet here. Brainwashing step one. Repeat your message in as many ways as possible, as many times as possible, while still avoiding attention. Why do you think you hear the same commercial over and over again? It's not because they're trying to make sure everyone hears it, it's because they know that you need to hear the message repeatedly until it gets into your head. But, you can't just go read the word God and think you know what's going on can't do it. You got to look up the definitions and that's what the Lord told me to do for y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so what did all those people do pre Jonathan Cleck? Just, just saying. Brainwashing step two. Include subliminal messages in as many places as possible. Brainwashing step three. Condition your victim to associate your message with primitive things like sex. <laughs> Luke, please don't put that in there. Okay, which is, you know, John's always talking about peckers and uh, other parts. So, I um, wanted to go over this latest and not so greatest video that he's doing and what he, and explain to you what he's doing. What, he, what he's trying to do is he's pushing that we're all, he's pushing the we're all fallen angels narratives again. And he starts off here at uh, 344. And he says, just imagine, stop, time out right there. Don't imagine. Read the Word of God, see what it says, believe what it says. Don't imagine, okay? So if he can get you to imagine, then he can lead you off track. So I'm going to play a little bit of uh, what he's saying here. I don't know how much of this I'm going to stomach. And then I'm going to hit you with some scripture to totally defeat what he's saying. Well, imagine if you got kicked out of heaven, and by the way, the Bible says, live out your life as exiles. Okay, so if there was an insurrection, and everybody got kicked out, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into, not on the earth, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, let me stop right there. We were cast out of the Garden of Eden, not heaven. Apples and oranges, totally different. Satan and his minions, totally different situations than us. They're the ones that led us astray. Okay, Satan came down, played mind games with Eve. Eve fell for it. Hence the fall of man. We inherited that sin, just like say a woman catches AIDS or something, she passes that to her offspring, okay? Now, um, that said, I want to go over the scriptures here with you, because what he's doing is he, he, he's talking about um, how we were clothed with nakedness, clothed with nakedness as a result of... Uh, our sin and that's a lie of the devil so what I've got here um, I've got Genesis pulled up on the screen and I'm talking a little bit about um, the creation of man and if you notice here in Genesis 2 the very last verse and it says and they were both naked the man and his wife and they were not ashamed but he's talking about Genesis 3 but it says in Genesis 2, they were both naked and not ashamed. Therefore, they weren't clothed with nakedness as a penalty like he's suggesting. Okay? So, you know, the sin was disobedience. Just like the fallen angels, that's, that was their sin, disobedience. And so, there are consequences to that. And then getting into Genesis 3 here, it says, And the serpent... It was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. I said to the woman, 
Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of it, every tree in the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but the fruit, excuse me, but yeah, but the, the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, you should, lest you die. God never said don't touch it. He just said don't eat of it. So, you know, he was embellishing that a little bit. So anyway, this thing goes on. It says, The servant said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good from evil. Okay, so Satan himself is right there saying that we're not gods. He's saying, you won't be gods until you eat. Okay? So that, that in itself, Satan is arguing with Cleck right there. But uh, continuing. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, good for food, not sex, food, because they, we were told we could eat from all the other trees in the garden. And if eating of a tree, eating the fruit of a tree, means having sex then the garden of eden was nothing but one big orgy because you know they were eating from all the other trees every single day until they fell and disobeyed god um so with that uh continuing it says uh, and the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a pleasure to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise make one wise doesn't say to have offspring okay god has already said to be fruitful and multiply previously okay so therefore he condoned sex he sanctioned sex he encouraged it he said he flat told him command him be fruitful multiply so you know jonathan's on this uh, you know sex is a dirty evil rotten thing and women's private parts of the mouth of satan i mean the guy is a flippant nutcase so i just wanted to go over this with you um really quick another thing um, i wanted to touch on is Everything God made was good. Okay? He said everything he made, this was prior to the fall. So if we were, um, if we were sinners before we even came to earth, and God created us here on earth, then we wouldn't have been good because we were sinners. We were fallen. But we didn't fall until we were disobedient. Okay? So he's screwing everything up, doing everything he can to promote this fallen angel agenda. Remember, Genesis 2 says that they were naked and they were not ashamed. Therefore, nakedness was not, as Jonathan is trying to teach, um, a penalty. We weren't clothed with nakedness. We were born naked. We're all born naked. But um, he's just twisting the scriptures once again. So uh, I just want to clarify this. I want to make this really, really short. And love you. And if there's anything I can do for you, um, please let us know. We're getting ready to do another uh, food uh, trip for the kids pretty soon. We've been really, really busy. And um, But we haven't forgotten those that have donated to that. We're good for this month, and um, so you don't have to worry about that one. But uh, we're going to be doing a road trip here within the next week or two and get up and feed some more kids. I'm, I'm, just, I'm busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. i got so much going on, you wouldn't even believe it. Okay? So with that, love you. If we can do anything for you, uh, please let us know again. And share the video. Please share the video. Put it on a playlist. Start a playlist. Put it on a playlist. Get the word out. Um, because people need to know this. People are following every day for this lies and deception this teaching. So, you know, please help. Please help me get the word out. And with that, take care. Bye now.